Okay, so that looks like those are all visible. Um, it looks like, it, first of all, we have that Empress card, which is just a beautiful card. It is a card of vitality, of abundance, of fullness. When Empress is around, that means everything is growing. Everything is full. It's a card of um, satisfaction. It can be a card of sexual satisfaction and sensual satisfaction. It's a card of um, pleasure. It's a card of... she's. She's got in the Rider weight traditionally on her shield here is an image of Venus. So she rules everything that has to do with sensuality, with pleasure, with, you know, food, table, and bed, basically. It's got all that Taurus sensuality imagery to it. And she's often pregnant. So if there's a way in which you are playing a nurturer, um, that's also Empress energy. It's basically like everything is full. Everything is growing. It's the time of the harvest. Um, she's basically the queen of fertility, growth, and abundance. So everything is rich and full and prosperous and abundant when she's around. So that opens the month for you, Cancer. Um, it's at least in a, if you're not feeling this or experiencing this, this is an arena in which this is possible. So it showed me that prosperity, abundance, fertility... All of that is available to you. You actually have to access it to receive it. But you've got that Empress energy around you to tap into if you so choose. Um, here is Hierophant. Now these are a couple of um, Major Arcana cards to start off the month. So Major Arcana are a little bit more um, important than the other cards. It's not quite the right word. But they're a little bit more, there's a little bit more emphasis, I think is a better word to say about the Major Arcana cards. So the fact that you have two, it's kind of puts a little bit more emphasis on that part of the month. I also see that you've got a lot of um, other Major Arcana cards towards the end of the month and one of them in the middle of the month. So there's a lot out of the 12 cards here, you know, five of them are... Um, our major arcana cards. So maybe there's going to be a pretty epic month for you or pretty, um, you know, a, a month with a lot of emphasis on it. Hierophant uh, points to doing things in steady, traditional ways. He is very conventional and he often speaks to doing things in ways that are tried and true. So there may be a way in which you are accessing uh, Empress energy through doing things in a very consistent, tried and true, traditional way. There may be a way in which keeping to the norm or keeping steady, keeping with the regular ways that things have been being done, gives you all this Empress energy. These two are allies at the beginning of the month. So if you are identifying with Empress, there may be a way in which a uh, hierophant, someone in authority, someone in structured, um, in a structured placement or having to do a spiritualism, a uh, spiritual mentor. These two are allies. So this could, if you're identifying with Empress, this could be an ally to you. Or if you identify with Hierophant, Empress could be an ally. These two are sitting together and opening the month. And they're both very potent, rich cards. So, and also they're both, um, you can see one of the things that they have in common um, is that they have this connection to other worlds. Uh, Empress has a lot of imagery of um, Demeter, the Greek goddess, who is goddess of the harvest. Um, you can see these shafts of wheat that she carries in her hand and that's behind here. And also her daughter uh, was Persephone in the Greek tradition, and that's where this pomegranate comes in. The, the Empress's daughter... Uh, went into the underworld for six months of the year. That's where they got the idea of the winter. And then when spring and summer came again, even fall, um, all the time of growth and harvest related to Demeter or Ceres. The Hierophant, too, has access to another dimension or another world. These keys that you see um, unlock a box that has secrets to another world. You can see this crescent shape of the moon here and crescent shape here. They have access to the subconscious mind. Um, and so in some ways, there may be a way in which spiritualism or access to the underworld is playing a part for you, uh, Cancer. You are also a moon child. So moon figures for you, Cancer. And 
what it's telling me is like pay attention to your dreams towards the beginning of the month because they may have some emphatic message to relay to you about how things will grow, how to be abundant, how to be prosperous. Um, and he holds up his hand with knowledge about the spiritual world. So there's going to be some richness or some answers for you in the subconscious world, in the world of sleep and dreams, the world of the moon. And that's a that's a place that you're naturally connected to, Cancer. So I would even say towards the beginning of the month, it might be fruitful, which is an empress word, to write down your dreams. Um, because Hierophant says there may be extra information, information that is not available to, you know, just everyone. Um, it's kind of like special knowledge because he has secrets and keys that unlock uh, the spiritual world. Also at the beginning of the month, there is a way in which you may be feeling like you have to carry a heavy burden and defend your ideals. If it, This is, feels like stuff you don't want to do. Um, Ten of clubs is traditionally a card of oppression. You can see in the imagery, it's a picture of a man who's carrying ten staffs or ten wands. Um, and it's kind of, it's oppressing him. It's almost breaking his back. It's very heavy. It's a heavy load. It's an oppressive card. And then um, Page of Swords is a card about, uh, the sword represents the mental realm. Um, so the realm of ideas, of thoughts, of our um our morals, our ideals that we're, we're willing to defend, our way of thinking, our beliefs. So, and Page of Swords is someone who is willing to stand up for what they believe in. Uh, in the Rider Waite, this is a, a young man standing on the top of a hill holding up his sword and saying, this is what I believe, I'm willing to defend it. Um, so, what this tells me is, especially because also it's in reverse, there's a way in which you're feeling this heaviness and having to defend your ideals, um, it feels like it's a lot of effort. And it may be, in some ways, I see these, they both have like hats with feathers in them. So there may be a way in which you're feeling the need to prove yourself towards the beginning of the month. And the solution to, to correct these cards from being in reverse is the solution to Ten of Clubs energy is putting down what's not necessary. Like if you're fighting every battle, if you're carrying everything, if you're carrying a lot of responsibilities that aren't yours, you need to put down some of that heavy load, put down what's not necessary, and it will be lightened. It's also a card about teaching. So um, if you can offload some of this Ten of Clubs energy by teaching um uh, some of the experiences that you've collected over time, that can help lighten the load also. This card is also a lead by example. So instead of feeling the need to always defend or prove yourself, by just standing in your truth and knowing it um, and feeling conviction about what it is you believe or think, that's kind of like leading by example. So you don't necessarily need to do all this proving and defending you can just stand in your truth and be strong there. So those, those to me would be solutions of how to correct those cards being in reverse. Because in reverse they present more of like the challenges or the heavy side of those cards. Or those cards are in shadow. Those cards are having a hard time coming to the surface. So that would be ways to correct those. Or it's another opportunity to experience the energy of that card um, in a positive way. Instead of a challenging way. Um, towards the middle of the month, you have some opportunities. To, there, there's a lot in here about making decisions. So both Seven of Cups is about making decisions, seeing things for what they really are, evaluating your choices, being presented with a lot of choices that may or may not be what they appear. And then Justice, obviously, is about rendering a verdict, uh, weighing the pros and cons of something and making a decision. Um, it's about weighing the ev evidence on something and coming out with a conclusion. What, what these cards in this sequence tell me, first of all, eight of wands is swift, swift motion. It's things happening quickly and swiftly. It's things almost being lined up. You can see it's the, the staves here are 80 to 90% lined up. They're about to be lined up. They're flying through the air. It's needed information. 
Um, so it tells me that you're going to get a piece of information that's needed to unlock the last puzzle piece, and then you'll be able to arrive at a decision quickly. Um, you may be in the middle of the month faced with a number of options that aren't quite clear or that are a little bit hazy or you're not sure which one to take. This is this card has a lot of um, I'm not sure which one to choose energy. There's a lot of different paths that you can take when Seven of Cups appears. You can choose like treasures, victory, relationship, home or fortress. You know, there's a lot of, of a different role that you want to play or not. So there's a lot of possibilities with um, Seven of Cups, and sometimes it's it's a card of illusion where uh, there's a question about whether what you see is what you get. And then, as you can see, and there's all this all this Neptune hazy cloud energy. So there's like this fog about making a decision in this card. Whereas, even though the clouds are still present in the background here, these eight wands fly through the air and it sort of like cuts through all that fog or that confusion and then a decision can be made quickly, a verdict can be rendered because now you have all the information because also this card can represent needed information so this is like news that comes to you sometimes it's even from a random source so you may be presented with um, some decision that you need to make but it's hard to make this the decision because it's all kind of hazy and then all of a sudden you get this information flying through the air out of the sky that helps you make a decision um, and you can make this decision fairly quickly because now with this information you can render a verdict it's sort of like you know in a courtroom because justice can represent courtroom it's like having the missing evidence all of a sudden appear and the information that's needed comes, and then the verdict can be rendered. And then also, too, after you make a decision, after a verdict's rendered, this could be a decision that you make, or it could be that someone is making this decision that impacts you in some way. Um, but what this card is, is that this card in its upright position is Five of Swords. It's I call it picking up the pieces. It is taking... Um, Taking away, these five swords represent ideas or trophies, collecting the spoils from a battlefield. So it's like when everything has been fought, all the war has been done, the battleground, the sun is setting um, on this battlefield, that you collect what's left over. And it's often like collecting new ideas, ways of thinking about things, collecting what's good left over from this battle. And because it's in reverse, it's making me question whether you are collecting the lesson or a new way of thinking about things once this decision has been made. Are you reaping the benefits of having gone through this process? I'm not sure. There's also, um, you know, with this and this in reverse leading to world, I don't know if you are standing in your own truth. I don't know if you are collecting, you know, the good, um, the good things that are coming from any conflict that you might have. Often there's lessons to be learned, and that is what will lead you to world. This is a card of fulfillment. This is a card of um, like everything goes your way. Everything that you need comes to you. It's basically just like fulfillment and completion of the cycle. Um, everything is surrounded by these laurel leaves. It's a, it's a card of, I don't know about victory, but fulfillment is definitely part of this card. So make sure that you are attending to your own beliefs, that you are collecting lessons to be learned from this decision-making process. Um, cause that's part of what leads to world happening. Another route to world is through this moon and strength energy. Again, You've got the moon appearing in this card, in this card, in this card, and, and in this card. So um, Cancer is definitely a card, uh, rather a month, where the cards are saying you're going to feel comfortable in your own element. Moon, that's, that's you, that's your card. That's all about the subconscious and access to the subconscious. So this is a card about... Um, the subconscious, the feelings of the subconscious, this is you by the way Cancer, you're the crab, coming up from the depths of emotion, because that's where you guys tend to reside, 
And it's finding a way, how can you let those emotions come up in a way that is balanced? This is coming up between the dog and the wolf. So the dog represents domestic domestication and the wolf represents um, being wild. So what it's saying is how can you allow those deep, deep rooted emotions that are based in the subconscious come out to the conscious world in a safe way um, that is neither too wild nor too tame. How can you let them come up in the gentle light of the moon, not necessarily the harsh light of the sun, but let them let them out softly and gently uh, in a way where you can acknowledge them and you can find that balance. That's what this card is about. It, it can also be a card about illusion. So in the same way that it's in line with this card, um, Seven of Cups, which is also illusion, be careful that um, when, when you're experiencing this empress energy of fulfillment, prosperity, abundance, that there isn't something that's disillusioning about it to you. Be careful that you are really looking at things and making decisions based on what they are, because this is all like Neptune and moon energy, um, which can be a little bit hazy. It can tell me that there might be a little bit, there could be some like drug use involved um, or anything that causes haziness of consciousness. It could be that, you know, you may just be dreaming about what it is that you want or letting feelings come up that haven't, you haven't been letting uh, see the light of day. The fact that moon is coupled with, with high priestess here, again, these are um, major arcana cards, so they're kind of intense. This is saying... When High Priestess is in reverse, it's saying that you may not be trusting your intuition about something. Um, you actually have inner knowledge about something, that's what High Priestess represents. But that you're not trusting it, or seeing it, or it's you're keeping it submerged, you're keeping it in shadow. So, see what it is that you can do. This is trusting your inner feelings. And this is usually in its right, rightful place, trusting your inner guidance, trusting your inner knowledge. Because High Priestess is in reverse, there's some way in which you may be allowing your subconscious feelings to come up, but you're not actually trusting your intuition about how to take action with those. So see if you can, um, or if you have questions, if there is illusion about something, and you're not sure how to keep keep things in balance, how to have a balanced perspective on things, trust your inner knowledge. You actually do know the answer to things. You're just not allowing that. Um, you're keeping this, your inner knowledge, your inner intuition suppressed, and you're not relying upon it. Um, I do show towards the end of the end of the month, you have a lot of strength, and you've got the world for, for you. So these are both strong, robust cards. Strength means having patience and endurance, um, she's able to open the lion's jaws, not through the force of will, but because she can be soft with the lion and open it through gentleness, not through forcefulness. So this shows patience and endurance over time. It may be that it's through this oppressive, whatever it is that you had to endure here, and through some justice that is being served, that you have exhibited endurance, patience, resolve, strength. That's that's a card that's you towards the end of the month. And through that strength, through having that patience and resolve and endurance, you end up at world, which is, again, just celebration. It's fulfillment. It's everything going your way. It's actually when the four elements of the physical world, the world of heart and courage and valor, the world of mentality and the world of spirit all line up. And I'm going to say there's something about lionhood. You know, lions are usually associated with courage and having a strong heart or will. Like if you think of Leo, there's a lion here and a lion here. So when you persevere, when you have the heart of a lion and have that sort of courage and endurance, um, that's when, you know, world is going to open up for you. So it actually looks like a very strong month for you, Cancer, both with all this moon energy. I'm going to say that your dreams are going to have a lot of information for you this month. And there will be some sort of verdict rendered, either whether it involves you or whether it's you making that decision. 
It may be hazy at first, but then there's going to be some piece of information that helps a verdict be rendered. Just make sure that you know you you collect the final knowledge about that con. If there if there was a conflict, remember to collect the lessons or collect walk away from it with new ideas because it's going to have that available for you, and that actually will help line up with world and fulfillment. You may see things in a new way. So, I mean, I could also see, too, this may be your initial um, view on the matter or situation or ideas about things, but then, and you might be kind of wrong about this. You might not be seeing the full picture. If you are able to, even though it's going to be a challenge, collect new ideas about things based on the way that things happened, that is what leads to world. That is when you, you see an overview picture. You see it from overhead because world sees things from, like she's floating out in the universe, she sees things from above, and there, therefore there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of um, extra viewpoints that she sees things from. It's not one-sided, it's not singular. She's able to just see all the truth. Someone once said that the truth is like a many-faceted a many diamond. And so to understand the real truth and the real heart of something, you can't just see one side of it. You can't just see one facet. But if you see the whole diamond, if you see it from multiple um, perspectives, then you get actually this richness, this fullness, this fulfillment, this real perception of the truth. And it's very, it sets you free. I hope you enjoyed that reading. And I just want to thank everyone for watching. And uh, again, just thanks everyone for your subscribes, your likes, your shares. And I appreciate each of you watching.